Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about why you must stop settling for mediocre Christianity and I want to explain to you how the prosperity gospel, which is something that people shun, they use that phraseology to mock the real gospel of Jesus Christ, but I want to tell you how the prosperity gospel deepens your faith in Jesus. All over social media, all over churches today, there is this reluctance to talk about prosperity. Some will talk about it, but it's always in some vague terms. And there's always a bunch of catches to it. And, oh, well, you know, God may give some people wealth. Other people is trying to teach them some lesson. Well, why does he want both of them to learn a lesson? How did one person not need all that suffering and misery? And they get a bunch of riches, but you need all this suffering and misery because you're somehow learning some special lesson. Because it's not true. This is something that's been passed down through all kinds of versions of Christianity throughout the years. And it's really what it is, is a lame excuse. So other religions have this thing they call karma, which is maybe you are somehow punished in this life because of something you did in a past life. But this is all the same basic rudimentary really pagan ideology where it's people trying to make excuses and cover up their what should be shame for their mediocre and pathetic lives so one religion can say oh well i'm i'm just suffering and my life's so sad because you know it must be a past life but i'm going to learn a lesson from this and the next life i'll do better that's a coping mechanism to feel like you're somehow the needless suffering you're going through right now is somehow leading to some greater value, some greater virtue in your life. Meanwhile, none of these people have anything you want. You would never point to these people who are just miserably suffering all the time needlessly and to say, wow, they sure have something spiritual and they sure are powerful in the faith. They're not. And the Christian church has done nothing different. I should say professing Christian church because it's not true Christianity. They've come along, made all the same lame excuses, because here's what's really going on. There's an enemy called the devil. He has sowed the seeds of doubt and unbelief into the hearts of these people. And many people are just propagating a gospel of mediocrity, a gospel of failure, a gospel of poverty, a gospel of sickness, a gospel of everything bad in the world, everything that sin brought in. They preach it and they proclaim it as if it's some sort of gift from God. Because they are choosing death and cursing each and every day instead of choosing life and blessing. And it's easier for them to just say, well, we have all these bad experiences because, you know, God's trying to teach us a lesson. We're just learning lessons and it won't be perfect until we're in the by and by. And no, that's all nonsense, my friend. That is all just coping mechanisms from mediocre people trying to justify their pathetic, miserable lives. And instead of acknowledging what's really going on, which is they don't have the work ethic to actually become successful. They don't have the diligence to actually become people of great success and, and character and substance. And they want an excuse to justify their low standings in life. Instead of rising up above the mediocrity of the world, and being that person of great faith and favor who lives a blessed life. And the blessed life is not so you can just consume it upon your own lust. It's not so you can just have a bunch of things. It is so you can be that best blessing that you could be, that many people want to be, but they've been sabotaged by these doctrines of devils, these false gospels, this gospel of mediocrity, that keeps them from being able to be the successes they could be and deserve to be. The very abundance that Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 10 that he came that you might have. And they turn away from it. And the Apostle Paul talking about money, material blessings in this life said, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Read it for yourself. Any gospel, which gospel means good news. Any gospel is telling you bad news is not a gospel. It's not from Jesus. It is not teaching you the truth. And yes, I understand the creeds and traditions of men have all kinds of 
religious phraseology and what about the book of Job? Somebody told me that today. What about the book of Job, you know? See, that shows the prosperity gospel doesn't work. First thing, it's Old Testament, so that's foolish enough. But secondly, have you ever read the book of Job? Job establishes what's going on. People want to talk about, well, Satan was allowed to... No, why was Satan allowed? Why could that even have been permitted? Was God wrong in blessing Job? Why did Satan get a hand there? Well, it wasn't because he went and petitioned God, and God somehow said, well, yeah, I want to curse Job now. That's not what happened. Job greatly feared. And he said his very own words, his own testimony about what was going on was, what I have greatly feared has come upon me. But, forgetting all that, well, how does the book end? Job received double what he had before. So the book starts with prosperity. It ends with prosperity. It is a prosperity book. And there are some sad moments of nine months or so, however long his trials were, that he went through because of his belief and negativity. His fearful attitude dragged into his life all these bad things. It wasn't God cursing him. But Job, just like we have today, has set before him life and blessing or death and cursing. You choose. You want to be in fear? You want to be in unbelief? You want to be talking about how the gospel is about poverty and lack and limitation and sickness and disease and failure and suffering? That's what you're going to receive. What you greatly feared. You're going to receive more of it. And it's going to be just confirming what you believed in your life because you've decreed it. It's been established in your life. You've established the misery, the failure, the pathetic, miserable, awful life that you've chosen for yourself. God didn't force it upon you. It wasn't God teaching you a lesson. It's your choice. And that can be hard to hear. Everybody wants to blame God. They want to blame the devil. They want to blame other people. But when you become a man or a woman of God, you have real character. You're not tossed about with every wave of doctrine. You're not going back to old creeds from men who try to justify their failure a thousand years ago. You just know God and you walk with him. You'll stand up and realize that I have responsibility for my life. I can't keep going around blaming God for every suffering and needless, foolish thing I'm going through when I made the choices that led to this decision that led to the bad result. And I could try to spiritualize it. I can try to justify myself. I could try to pat myself on the back and act like I'm an innocent victim of life. Or I can understand that the issues of life I'm experiencing, they come from my heart, as Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says. I can understand that as I think in my heart, so am I. And I've chosen to believe something wrong, a mediocre version of professing Christianity. And I'm getting that result. As Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. You want to believe in a faithless, weak, pathetic, anemic gospel? According to your faith, be it unto you. You're going to get those results. As the scripture says, if a man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. You want to be that ignorant? Okay. But why not choose life? Why not choose blessing? Why not choose to know the goodness and grace of God, that very goodness and grace of God that brings you to repentance? Because I'm going to tell you, as far as in my life, and knowing God, the prosperity gospel has not made me love money. The very opposite is actually what's occurring. It has not made me greedy. What it has done is deepen my faith in the Lord. It has radically expanded my gratitude to God for all the blessings of the Lord in my life. It has not made me anything negative, anything bad. Matter of fact, all those people who are talking about this mediocre poverty gospel, they're the ones who love money. They're constantly, day in and day out, focused on money. They go work jobs they hate strictly for money. What is more idolatrous than that? But then, to soothe their consciousness, because they know they're not doing the things they should be doing, they know they're not working with the work ethic that God would require of them, they know they're out of the favor of God, they know they've chosen death and cursing. So to soothe all that, they say, well, it must not be God's will. You know, God may bless some people with money, but for me, he's just trying to teach me a lesson. No, my friend. 
First thing, there's no lesson for you to learn because I know people who have been preaching the poverty gospel for decades and they are no better for it. They don't have better character. Their faith has not grown any. You would never go to them for prayer for anything because you know their prayers don't get answered. You know their prayers are in vain. Their words are useless. They don't have what they say, like Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. When they pray, nothing happens. And nothing ever will happen except more bad stuff because that's what they've chosen to believe. And they're not walking deeply with God. They don't have that deep binding union with God, that faith in God to trust Him in every area of your life. So instead, they have to justify Justify their own mediocrity. Justify their own failings. Justify why they don't have riches. Justify why they're not wealthy. Justify why they don't have wisdom. It's all a self-justification, excuse-making act. And it doesn't bring you any closer to the Lord. And that, my friends, is one of the most important things. I emphasize all the time in my videos, I want you to become more like God. That's my goal every day is to become more like my Heavenly Father. To walk more like my Lord Jesus did. You don't do that by believing everything against the gospel. By believing in a foreign gospel of weakness and mediocrity and misery and failure. And when you embrace the fact that God is good... When you embrace the fact that it is from his very goodness that he sent his son in the first place. And that his son came that you might have life and have that more abundantly. When you understand that Jesus came and became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. When you embrace that, your faith in God will increase. You'll start seeing his blessings everywhere. You'll start seeing the beauty and holiness of God all around you. And you'll start seeing how infinite and inexhaustible his grace is in your life and you'll start to experience the real world tangible proof of his grace tangible proof and fruit of his favor in your life in the form of blessings whether it be material whether it be physical whether it be mental whether it be spiritual you'll have all of that in abundance because God's grace will be flowing through you his favor will be mightily upon you and you my friend will be a prosperous Christian, the only true Christians that there really are. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.